Welcome to The Real Heal. I am your host, Dr. Renee Wallenstein, also known as The Libidoologist. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Joy, I am so excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. And I have to say, you are the only woman to have done the amazing things that you've done. And we'll get into it in a second, but you are just truly a um, a, a blessing to this world of functional medicine, holistic health, whatever we want to call it, moving forward in the future of medicine. And again, it's a little spoiler alert because we'll get into it, but um, I just want to start it off by saying thank you in advance because you're you're doing amazing things to help the health of this country and, and world. So thank oh. you. Thank you too. Thanks a lot. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got doing what you're doing today. So um, I'm from a family where uh, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and all those crazy issues ran rampant. (laughs) And my dad died when I was about two plus from complications of diabetes and hypertension. My mom died later in life in her 70s from the same thing, but carried those issues throughout her life. And I, my, I remember my my recollection of my mom is, you know, watching her every day, you know, be so focused on taking her pills, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that she complied with, you know, what the doctor gave her, all those medications, because you know, that's going to make her better. But they really didn't. And 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 at the end of the day, she ended up having quadruple bypass and complications of diabetes and died after being in a coma for you know for quite a while. So those are those are backdrops that you know stuck in my mind. And as I got older and owned my own business, I would remember people coming into my office, especially managers, women managers, and they would relay certain experiences to me. Um, especially about menopause and all that stuff. And, you know, I didn't sleep last night and they were short tempered, you know, all the, those issues. And um, and I was in my 30s then. And at that time, it occurred to me that, you know, clearly something isn't working here. And I don't I, I didn't want to look forward to that life. I didn't want to have to deal with menopause. <laughs> I wanted to find out what that was all about. I didn't want to deal with hypertension. I didn't want to deal with, um, you know, being overweight or it, it's almost it was almost inevitable. It, it would seem that that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I started as an attorney. I'm an attorney by trade. And one of the good things about law is that it teaches you how to learn. There are areas that you, you'd you have no formal training on, but you know where to go find the information. Mm. And I'm a healthcare attorney. And, and the other thing too is that I saw so many, I had to go through so many medical records, thousands, yeah, and you see what the issues are in hospitals and with what the patients complain about and, you know, all that stuff. So I had to learn really fast uh, about the area and and I work with doctors as well. And my brother was a cardiologist. And I saw even he had issues with respect to understanding what was going on in his body. So it, it just was one of those things where I felt like if I wanted to live a healthy life, I had to do something else because what what I saw was clearly not working. Mm-hmm. And so I um, I did a crap ton of research. I... <laughs> I uh, ended up writing a book with three doctors and I managed the book in such a way that I didn't want the, the, the medical ease crap in it. I wanted it to be a book where a lay person with less than a high school education could understand it because communication is also important. So I, I ended up realizing that, um, <laughs> you know, for medication is good. There's a place for traditional medicine. Mm-hmm. I would I I I really resent when people say that um, traditional medicine doesn't work because it does. There's a mm-hmm. there's definitely a place for it. Mm-hmm. The point is that we also have to understand that all medications have side effects, mm-hmm. and the the issue there is it does more good than bad things, to put it simply. And but if we recognize that it has side effects we will take steps to mitigate the, the, the side effects 
by understanding how it works. Mm -hmm. And so if it robs the body of certain nutrients, then it's up to us at the end of the treating period to, to identify what those nutrients are and put it back. Or if you're going to eat more foods to put it back, or if you're going to supplement to put it back, but to put it back so you minimize the, 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 the side effects. Mm -hmm. The other thing I recognize too, though, is if we take certain steps um, to determine what or what or um, nutritional information is, then we can go a long way in staying healthy as opposed to waiting to get sick first mm -hmm. and then having to rely on medications. And that played a huge role in even my journey through menopause, which I which I was happy I was able to skip. You know, so I never had those issues. It, it, it was also important in, in ensuring that I did not have to suffer the way my parents did. So I, you know, at 63, I don't have diabetes, I don't have hypertension, I don't have joint issues, etc. Because I was able to watch what happened to them and avoid those issues by, quote unquote, being proactive. And how I, and how I became proactive was I realized that... Um, as we age, and, and when I say age, I mean after 30, mm -hmm. <laughs> because our bodies really start to change after that. Mm -hmm. As we age, our body's ability to absorb nutrients from food um, reduces. It, 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 it's, just, it's just natural, it happens, nature. Mm -hmm. And um, just the way our skin ages and we see wrinkles, our internal organs age. And because we can't see it, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And when that happens, it, it, they're less effective at absorbing those nutrients from the food we eat that we need to live. Because at the end of the day, we eat to live. And the reason why we eat to live is because our bodies utilize the, the food, the nutrients from the food to do a bunch of things to make us happy and healthy. And so many people will tell us it doesn't really matter about supplements or 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 doing anything else you just have to eat eat you know eat well well there are other issues too with respect to that eating well concept in that the nutrients that are currently in available in those foods they're not even the same as they were you know way back when because the soil is different mm -hmm. you know there's just a variety of factors that affect our ability to absorb nutrients, the right nutrients in the right amount from the food we eat. But most importantly, our, our cells, our bodies, the changes in our bodies. If we take medication, that's going to reduce, you know, rob the body of certain nutrients. So there's so many, if we, depending on our lifestyle, if we're athletes, if we're, you know, just a myriad of factors. So it's up to us to, to, to understand our bodies well enough so that we can do the things necessary to make sure that we stay healthy and happy. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I did was testing um, because you can't guess that you have the right amount of vitamin C. It was through testing, for example, that I realized that no matter how much vitamin C I get from the foods I eat, my body couldn't absorb it mm. because um, I had a genetic um, issue that you know reduced the likelihood of me ever being optimal in vitamin C. So I have to do other things to make sure that I get optimum, you know, optimal vitamin C. How many people know that? Not, not too many. And they'll forever think, okay, I'm going to go eat my fruits and veggies and I'm going to be okay. Not necessarily because some people have genetic issues. Mm -hmm. and, and then there are other issues too, where um, if you, if you, if you're an athlete, you might need more vitamin B, you know, for stress and all the other issues. So it, it's just, it, these are just things that we as consumers need to know about ourselves so that we can take the steps necessary to, 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 um, to make sure that we stay healthy. Mm, I love that. So you had a, a, I mean, you're so passionate about this topic. You founded a nonprofit for mm -hmm. education purposes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I think education is perhaps <laughs> the most important tool mm -hmm. we can ever have in our toolbox of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I found out is that 
doctors, much as they would like to, don't have the time to educate us. It's not, it's not that they, they, they don't want to. It's not practical, you know, if they're to make a living. Many doctors just don't have that time. Mm-hmm. And um, at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility for our health. The problem is, where do we go to get that information? Um, Google, you know, it, it, many, many of us Google, Google the info, but there's so many things out there. Um, and people, people, many people who um, have educational platforms, it's usually for another motive. It's to make money. Mm-hmm. And um, it was important to me when I formed Proactive Health Labs to have a platform where we can provide objective and credible information to people that they can understand easily and it would also benefit their lives and help them be proactive about their health and it didn't relate to any one area it related to all aspects of our bodies you know if if it's heart health if it's kidney health if it's you know uh, musculoskeletal issues it was to show why all these nutrients benefit all those areas and how they how we can apply them to our day-to-day lives mm-hmm. and, and pretty much keep it simple. So for example, uh, understanding that what we eat, even though we hear it a lot of times, what we eat really does matter. Uh, but up to a point, we have to take the steps to determine whether what we eat is working for us and make changes where appropriate. So uh, that that was what Proactive Health Labs is about. But in addition, we have since grown beyond food and what we have talked about are, are there other proactive ways that we can um, identify that will keep us healthy. So for example, one of the things that I came up with or realized is uh, things like, uh, or modalities like, um, you know, cryotherapy as an example. We did some research, found out that that's also something for, you know, for musculoskeletal health or just general wellness that 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 works. And after we did the research, we found out how important it was for those of us who work out to be able to recover after we work out, because you can't keep working out and and not figure out a way to get our bodies back to normalcy. So we we can we eat well, but when you do exercise, you want some modality to be able to recover. So we introduced craft therapy, talked about it. Um, we did a ton of research on red light therapy as an example mm-hmm. and, and found out how important that too is. So we're constantly evolving and to find out how can we enhance our nutrition by modalities that will help us stay healthy. So those are all things that we have done as we have grown um, and that, you know, educated the public about them so that they can make an informed decision as to, you know, how they should live their daily lives. I love that. You know, and actually you answered, that was one of the questions I had for you because in looking at your site, you know, I do see that you believe in the benefits of cryotherapy and and red light therapy. Aside from the athlete, as far as like when it comes to cryotherapy, um, what is the best means? Is it taking a cold shower? Is it going into a freezer? Like I do this, um, whole body cryo. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what's available to me in my area, uh, for three minutes at like, I don't know, minus two twenty. Yeah. Fahrenheit. It was pretty cold, but, um, you know, and they talk about all the other benefits Not you know, aside from the athlete, because we have a lot of listeners that maybe not the athlete, but they have chronic joint pain or they're, you know, a lot of the, aging things that they're, they're, and they're trying, they're working on their nutrition, but are there other benefits to cryo and, and what's the, in your research, what has been the best as far as means of delivering the, the cold therapy? Yeah. Yeah. I am a big fan of cryo and there are, tons, there, there are other benefits that research has demonstrated of, of cryo, such as um, certain musculoskeletal issues like arthritis and, you know, fiber, you know, fibromyalgia, and um, in some cases, even mental um, benefits. Mm-hmm. But and, and I, I, I like the whole body um, three minute cryo. I do that three times a week, mm-hmm. and um, and I, I can feel the difference. Mm-hmm. But like everything else, you have to remain consistent. Mm-hmm. It's not just about 
okay, doing it once a month and figure you're going to reap some benefits. You have to commit to to doing it to reap the benefits. It's a, my son um, had some anxiety issues and that's his personal story. Um, there's no no concrete research on that issue. There, there, there's suggestions, yep. but so I can so I'm not saying that you're gonna go find PubMed articles that's gonna <laughs> say you know cryotherapy will will help with anxiety. There's, there are many studies that are, that have suggested that there's a link between cryotherapy and mm-hmm. you know anxiety or cryotherapy and joint pain or cry cryotherapy and and you know well actually there there's concrete studies to show it it, it, ha- it helps with recovery as mm-hmm. well as yeah. fibromyalgia and sleep in some in some instances mm-hmm. but um each person has the, the the way that whole um system works the cryotherapy modality works as you know the blood rushes from your skin to your internal organs. It, it gets oxygenated and all the nutrients, you know, when it comes back, it comes back more and more enriched blood. So logically, it it will have benefits. Mm-hmm. And it, to the extent that that's the way it works, I think if I have issues, then I'm going to try to see if I can benefit from those issues. Mm-hmm. And so it will, it supposedly helps with immunity as well mm-hmm. because of the way it works, the, the, the mechanism by which it, it, it operates. The same thing with red light. Mm-hmm. Um, red light works on the mitochondria. If, 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 if you're, if you're um, no different than a plant um, in sunlight with, with photosynthesis where the plant gravitates to light and, and actually, um, it's a healthier plant when it's with light. You know, it has light. Some plants are like that. So in that case, if it helps your cells work better, then there could be a host of other benefits as a result of your cells working better. Mm-hmm. So therefore, it may help with sleep. It may help. But to the extent that there's no hard and fast research in some areas that says red light helps with X, then people are saying, well, you know, there's no credible research out there that says it. But what the credible research does show is that it works on the mitochondria. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it helps your cells work better than it would if it, if you did, if you were not exposed to red light. So yeah. it's up to us to, to, to review information and, and absorb them in a way that makes sense to know what might work for us and, mm-hmm. and what might make us feel better. Yeah. And so just look at the big picture of both of those modalities, you know, re-oxygenating essentially the blood, you know, and of course I, I know I feel more energized when I do yeah, cryo. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I could go in there feeling tired and I come out, I'm like, whew, like I feel, I don't know. I feel slimmer. I feel yes. you know, more awake. Yeah. I just feel yeah. like a different person. That's yeah. three minutes. It's amazing what three <laughs> minutes can do, I know. but also, um, you know, talking about red light, like, um, you know, the mitochondria are the energy like little, little gas tanks of our cells. Right. So like they're doing everything from helping us absorb nutrients to detoxing mm-hmm. our cells. So like, and as we age, they can maybe not function as well. So, exactly. Exactly. you know, I think yeah. aside, in addition to fueling your, your mitochondria with appropriate nutrients and you, you talk mm-hmm. about testing for that also doing other things like Red light therapy, laying in a laying in a bed, yes, under yes, the lights, yes, you know. Yes, 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 and, and and obviously we can't get it. In, we can't get enough quote unquote light from the sun mm-hmm. because of skin cancer and the fact that you know we're not out in the sun a lot. Yep. <laughs> yep. So so if if so light does play an important role in our health, and to the extent that we can get it safely in a red light therapy bed then um, in the right amounts and the right dosage, then I think that's something that we might want to look at and consider uh, as as part of our wellness routine. I totally agree. Absolutely. And, you know, I think these, these modalities are popping up across the country, at least in the U S. So I know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I move closer to a facility um, living in a city now, unfortunately, a lot of them are in cities in right. urban areas, right. but right. you know, right. there are some home you know, back yes, when I, uh, yes, back yes. when I didn't have these facilities, I'd walk outside in the winter weather I'm in New York and, you know, in a, in my workout gear, so shorts and a sports bra and sit out there and sub-zero temperature <laughs> to try to get a little benefit of cryo. Right. You know, I did yeah. what I had, like, I don't oh. love cold showers. So I, I go outside for upwards of like 17 minutes, wherever I was like, okay, I'm really cold. 
but it's like you, you cross this threshold where you're like, okay, you start getting invigorated and like energized and happy. It's just Weird. very bizarre. The things that come over you when you're in this cold that like you would never expect. Exactly. And, and it's a little, I don't, it's a, addicting. Cause it must be, you know, the endorphin rush that you get, like, then you want to do it the next day and the next yes, day. So, yes, yes, um, yes. so that was my little hack for, if you don't have these facilities, I just went out in the cold weather. So <laughs> I did what I, what I could do. Do what, what, you, you, do what you can do. You do yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was digging through your, your site and it, again, I, we will make sure we link your site in the, the show notes. Um, so everyone can go check it out because it, honestly is such an amazing wealth of information. So again, thank you for what you do, because this is, you know, this is non for profit, you know, like that you, you run based on donations, correct? We do. And we, 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 we sell, um, we sell services. Like we have a doctor okay. so we sell services to help pay for also yeah. some of the, some of the things we do. Money's got to come somewhere, yeah. um, you know, so, but it's just amazing that not only it's just amazing the amount of information on there and most of the information and in, in the articles I, I proved through were written by you. So like you must do a ton of research. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I wanted to do as I got older, um, because as I told you before, I'm an attorney by trade. Yeah. And after a while I stopped doing trials and I wanted to, and it helps me too. That's the, yep. that's the thing. There's a selfish motive to this as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So sometimes I'll be at a doctor's office and, um, you know, the doctor will say something and I just go to my website and, and, and search for the information. <laughs> I well, about, I, did some research, I did some research about this before. Oh, let me see if this is the case. You know, so I can, I can actually, actually ask intelligent questions and, and understand yeah. what's happening, you know, to me. So there is actually, there's a, there's, there's a, you know, there's a selfish component there too, because it helps me, it forces me to learn. Yeah. So every day that I research something or I write an article for the site, it's something new that I learn and, and I research it myself to know what the pitfalls are and what to look for. So yeah. go I love that. So thank you again. <laughs> but as for your site, 80% of Americans have some sort of nutritional deficiency. And that just like blew my mind. I mean, I know fibers up there, you know, but there's other deficiencies. Like, why is this? I mean, again, we kind of touched on the food quality, but um, based yeah. on the soil, but you know, why, why? And, and again, you peruse through tons of medical records as you, as an attorney, like, where do you see a connection in this shockingly high number of Americans mm -hmm. with a deficiency? And they, they're walking around not knowing, but they're having the yeah. low energy or yeah. gut issues yeah. or brain fog or what have you. Yeah. So, so number one thing, aging, mm -hmm. life, life, it, it, it's inevitable that we're going to be nutrient deficient if yeah. we age. Um, so that's a big factor and understand, especially for us women that aging really starts at 30 when it, you know, so, so age is, it's, it's, it's a fact. That's why we grow old. That's why we get gray hair because we lose certain nutrients necessary to make our hair because, you know, stay gray less. So, you know, we, there, there's our hearts, you know, we may are, are less effective as we age um, or ovaries are, are less effective as we age. And, and I guess most of us relate to that right away. It have there are things that we know, but we don't, um, we either don't understand it or we don't relate it logically to how our bodies operate. Mm -hmm. So it's a fact of life that as we age, um, there's a, it's more likely than not that we're going to be nutrient deficient, hundred yeah. percent. So 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 perhaps if I were to go even further, is it, it's, it's probably reasonable to say that at some point, a hundred percent of us will become nutrient deficient. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that's with the, and that's assuming that we eat the right foods in the right amount in the right order whatever that's assuming we're doing everything that we need to do to to take care of, that we think we need to do to take care of our bodies by eating properly okay or 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 daily routine physical activity that's one that's one way that we're going to be nutrient deficient if we don't do something about it so if we're an athlete we have to be extra careful about replenishing those nutrients that we we we, we utilize 
And by nutrients, by the way, I mean things like protein, water, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, and vitamins, because there are six basic nutrients that we need to live. Mm -hmm. and um and those are the six categories of nutrients and then of course we use oxygen we breathe oxygen to burn the nutrients and make them useful to our bodies so and if we're if we let's say we're an athlete we may need extra carbohydrates we may need extra protein we may need extra minerals to make us function effectively and if we don't know that and replace those nutrients that we utilize then we increase the likelihood of becoming sick mm -hmm. and not well over time because those nutrients form a very important role in keeping us healthy. They're, the, we, 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 they're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And each of them, you know, we, we hear about calcium for strong bones, but we need magnesium too. That plays a role in strong bones. Mm -hmm. But many people relate to calcium, but they don't relate to magnesium, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the, those are just, we, we, we hear about vitamin C, you know, to, to help our immune system, but there are also other, other nutrients that help our immune system like zinc, mm -hmm. but we hear more about vitamin C than we hear about zinc, you know, so, so it's up to us to be aware of the nutrients and how they work for us so that when we are performing activities or when we age, you know, we can identify what they are that will help us and then put them back. However, eat more foods or take supplements or do IV drips because some of us may need that occasionally. Mm -hmm. Now, um, other factors are medications. Mm -hmm. You know, even painkillers. Many people take painkillers. Pain they deplete our bodies of nutrients. Mm -hmm. If you've been on a you know steady regime of painkillers most of your life, chances are if you've never checked you're probably nutrient deficient mm -hmm. so just understand that they're just normal things what we consider normal life activities that will make us nutrient deficient and if we if we are aware of those mm -hmm. then we will you know periodically test to see whether or not we're deficient in certain things if you're for example when i was doing trials a lot i would constantly test my B, B, B complex, I mean, B vitamin levels, mm -hmm. because it's not, we just, it's, there are many B vitamins. It's not just B12. Many of us think it's just B12. There's more than that. Mm -hmm. And so you test to see, and, and many times I was constantly low mm -hmm. because, you know, stress takes, you know, depletes the body of nutrients and B vitamins are one of them. Mm -hmm. So if you know, you constantly take, probably have a B complex before you start a trial or, you know, have more of it during that period so that you don't go deficient. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that um, we are aware of those circumstances that will lead to nutrient deficiency and test. Now, water Many people don't know that you can test for the, you know, the body composition to determine whether or not you're hydrated or not hydrated. And we wait until we're thirsty to determine whether or not we, you know, we, we, we need water. Mm -hmm. But there are modalities that can test to see whether or not you're hydrated. There's a, there's a modality called the in-body. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're aware, you know, yep. if you, you know what that is. And you can tell whether or not you have enough water and in the right balance in your body. Yep. It also tests for your fat levels mm -hmm. because fat, is, some people believe you, 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 you always have to see fat, but there are people who are skinny and are fat. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right composition of mm -hmm. you know, body fat in order to increase the likelihood of you being healthy. So just because you look skinny does not necessarily, you know, doesn't mean that you're healthy. <laughs> You, know, you can still be over fat and skinny. So the, the way you know is the test. So it's just, I think one of the big things that Pete tries to do is to just motivate people to do something and not wait on a doctor to tell them to do it. You know, mm -hmm. be proactive, test your water levels, test your nutrient levels, even test your internal fat levels, mm -hmm. um, your scales that will do that as well. Mm -hmm. To just get a sense of where are you in your personal health? You need to know if you're really concerned about being healthy because uh, you don't have to wait until you're sick 
to do something because many times by the time you're sick, it's too late, mm -hmm. you know, or you have to take drastic steps, to, more drastic steps to stay healthy. So, so the, the, the critical thing here is learning how to be well, mm -hmm. you know, feel well, sleep well, you know, not be depressed, not, not have those big headaches and just, you know, and not know what to do, you know, be well. And, and that plays such a huge role in how we maneuver our way through society, because I think we compete better for a while. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think we become better employees. We become better mothers. Um, that's one of the things that was critical to me as a mom is how can I best be the best by best self for my child? And the way I was my best self for my child was to make sure that I was well so that I could be there for him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just. Things like that we need to put in context and just be more aware of how that thinking affects your life in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I'm hearing uh, is like, you know, being more proactive, you know, like not. And I, again, I was conventionally trained as an OBGYN, which was very and I and I and I, I agree. Conventional medicine, traditional medicine, whatever we want to call it, has definitely has a place. Definitely. Oh, yeah. We need it. Right. Yeah. 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 But as a conventional physician, the only thing I really knew how to do, and I was very good at it, is to take your symptoms, put them in a little box of a diagnosis and give you a medication. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, while I do also feel that there's a place for pharmaceuticals, I do think yes. that we tend, both sides, doctors and patients tend to overuse them because my feeling as a doctor is if I only get five minutes with you and I can't really, I don't have the time to educate Mm -hmm. on all the topics, nor, nor did I have the in-depth knowledge that I have now about nutrition. It's something I had to do on my own. I didn't get yeah. it in medical school, but I went to no. med school a long time ago, but, um, yeah, they, they just, they don't, they, they can't do it because they don't know. We weren't educated in medical school and docs don't have time to really do a lot of outside learning aside from their board mm -hmm. <laughs> recertification. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I would always think, gosh, if I could give a prescription, just a, a patient coming in, which she has a symptom she wants something to help it. I have a pill for her. We both are happy. Yes, yes, yes. But that can get, you know, a, a, it can be a vicious cycle because if you go to your doctor with every single symptom and you get a pill for every single symptom, well, number one, there's, there's, you know, all the yeah. interactions, polypharmacy, the, yeah. polypharmacy yeah. and the side effects, mm -hmm. you know, and I even had my mom a few years back call me. She's like, mom, Renee, I'm on 20 plus medications. I'm like, because you go to your doctor with every little symptom. Yeah. And when I went through, she was on three or four different medications for the same symptom. Of course. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. Right. So there's that. And then I also feel there's the other side of, um, our culture or society whereby they use it as a crutch, you know, like some of these ailments that are, that are prescribed medications probably could be either alleviated or completely resolved with lifestyle changes. Yeah. I'm not saying, right. Like blood pressure, you need blood pressure medication to bring yes. it off. But yes. 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 you can't get off diabetes, yes. like or especially early diabetes. Like, and it, I know it's not easy and it's not comfortable, but you have yeah. a wonderful site for information. You're <laughs> empowering people. Like, here's the information. Now we just have to do something with it. So right, 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 right. I guess it's all leading up to, you know, you feel no, no matter where we are in our lives. So if we already have that blood pressure, diabetes, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's, it's, a, I'm a done deal. Like it's, I already am on medications, but you don't feel that way. Right. You, you think we can still be proactive about our health. Can you just, of course, that a of, little course. Bit of course. And you bring up a very important point, like hypertension and diabetes. Yep. yep. It's not that you already have like that type two diabetes can be addressed with lifestyle changes. Yep. I mean, there's so many studies and examples of people who have done that. If you really want to, if you, if you have type two diabetes and you really want to, um, to get off meds for that, you can do that in many, many instances in, in probably most instances. And, um, it's, you know, weight is an issue, activity is an issue, diet is an issue. Um, but if we know what to do there, isn't that a lot better than being on the meds, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, I, and I don't know to what extent many doctors push that um, aggressively, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to trying to get patients well. Maybe they take the medication for a while, but work towards getting off of it over a certain period, you know, where medication is more of a short term help as opposed to a long term lifetime um, issue. So, 
you know, it's, I, I have many conclusions as it relates to that. Perhaps the monetary aspect is, mm-hmm. is, is, is more enticing, but I think as patients, it's up to us to, to educate ourselves as to, to how we can be proactive in that respect. Hypertension, you know, many people, they do not even have a hypertension monitor at home. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's, that is so important that you can monitor, you need to monitor, your, you, you don't wait until you go to your annual physical to, to monitor your blood pressure. You need to have a blood pressure monitor at home. If your blood pressure is starting to get high and, and consistently high, you can have that conversation with your doctor as to how you can be proactive. And at the same time, per, perhaps there are certain lifestyle, lifestyle changes that you can make to, to make sure that it doesn't get any higher and that it, you know, you, so that you, or you can reduce it. Yeah. Um, so those are all things we talk about on our site. And, and when I talk about physical activity, you're talking to somebody who does not particularly like working out. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to sit here and tell somebody, you know, tell anyone that they need to be joining a gym and go to the gym. I don't like structured workouts, mm-hmm. but, but, but when, when I say activity, Find something that you like to do that involves activity. So if it's tennis or um, or pick a, pick a ball or you know golf, walk, not sitting in the car but walking and, <laughs> and as well, you know. But um, hiking, I, I love hiking. I have dogs. I have four German shepherds. I go I go hiking with them. You know, it, it's it's find things that 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 are important and that you like to do that you can incorporate because there's no point committing to going to a gym at the beginning of the year. And then by, by March, you're out because, oh my gosh, this is too much. I don't have the time. I can't incorporate it into my life. You know, it's up. We can each find that thing that works yeah. for us. Yeah. And once we find it, you know, just do it and make it fun. And, and sometimes you can invite other people to join you along that journey that will that are also interested. You find peers that like the things to like to do the things that you like to do. So the lifestyle changes are really important when it comes to diabetes and hypertension. And and I think it's simple enough if we just put our minds to it. Because for the things that we really it, things that are what I notice is that things that are important to us in life, we find a way to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and so our health is important. So we need to make our health priority as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I think the the message here is like, it's not, you're never too far gone, but the hopes are that you're, you intervene and become more proactive prior to yes. getting an yes. actual disease, especially if you're, you know, it could take years to develop an actual disease, but you have the symptoms. So, mm-hmm. you know, I actually, um, I, I'm on a lot of social media platforms, uh, educating, and I kind of went on this rant yesterday about farm, pharma- like j- what I just said, like I, there is a place, but I, you know, and so yeah, yeah. a woman commented how her mom had a hypertensive crisis and stroke from, yeah. which is a, as a result of a very high blood pressure. And she had to go on blood pressure medications, but she said with lifestyle changes in three weeks, she came off her blood pressure medicines. Perfect. Oh, she did that. Perfect. And she stopped smoking and, yeah. oh. you know, and started to eat better. Yeah. Yeah. And three weeks, that's all it took. And yeah. this is a woman who yeah. had a stroke, but okay. So the lesson here is unfortunately she had a stroke and but, that's what it took, but mm-hmm. it's short, mm-hmm. such a short period of time in such a motivated person. Yes. Yeah. She, she was off her medications already. Yes. And, yes. you know, and a blessing from the doctor, because just don't go off your medications. That's not what we're telling you to do. But right. her doctor took her off the medications because she was doing everything right you, towards right. moving right. towards a, a, a different lifestyle that's going to promote mm-hmm. a healthier blood pressure. Of course, of course. So yeah. again, our, our message is hopefully like it is never, you're never too far gone, but hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, you hear this message and you're like, okay, I can start doing these little things now, like you don't have to do it all. That's the other thing. I think a no, lot of, no, 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 not all at it's, once, just uh-uh. little by little, right? Like choose uh-uh. one thing. Like you said, go for a walk, get a yeah. dog. If you like no, dogs, literally, I literally, literally. I mean, they're so good for health. I, that's a whole nother topic, but you know, I agree. I have dogs, a German shepherd dogs, mix. Yep. Really? Yeah. Dogs are so good for health. It's not funny. Even more mental health. You know, I and, agree. and people don't recognize that sometimes. In fact, many times I run into people who don't have dogs and I, I don't want any dogs. You know, they 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 they, they shed, they do the, you know, they require too much activity. And I said, well, maybe you need the activity. Yeah. 
it's exactly what I was saying yesterday. I had like at least 13,000 steps. You know, sometimes these, these watches, they're not Me very too. accurate, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm sure I had more than that. But I said, get a 75 pound dog that needs to take at least two long walks a day. And exactly. there's your steps. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> and if you don't, you get little puppy eyes. I have him sitting next to me. You know, he's currently <laughs> sleeping. So that's good. We're safe. But, uh, um, and I guess the last thing, you know, just sort of wrapping up, um, on the topic of pro being proactive, you know, how I came from the conventional world whereby I felt like I had to, I, I cared a lot more about women's health than they did. And again, I think it's skewed. I think I always hear about the, I remember the negative instances where I stayed awake at night worrying about a baby or what have you because of mom's right. lifestyle. And then even in my brick and mortar functional medicine practice, same thing. I sometimes felt like I had to, yes, they were taking the first steps of coming into the office, but actually implementing some of the things we talked about. I felt like, oh, come on, I got to drag you along here. I, I, are there ways that we, you know, we talk all about this being proactive. Are there ways that we can help people actually care more about their health? <laughs> You know, um, some, you, I think they have to find you relatable. Yeah. Okay. As one, one, one example. Um, if they feel that you're just, um, it's just a theoretical thing with you, 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 you know, you, you should do this or it would be good uh-huh. if you do this. Uh, I, I, they're less likely to buy into the fact that being proactive works. Yeah. They have to know sometimes your story. Mm-hmm. They have to see it working with you or the people around you. Yeah. You, 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 you can, and, and, and I, I always talk about, and, and this is a touchy subject, but the obese doctor, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, and if, if you walk into a doc to see a doctor uh, about weight issues or lifestyle issues, and your doctor is smoking or drinking a Diet Coke and, and, um, you know, or, um, or, you know, they're obese. You know, you can talk all you want about how to be proactive about your health. You kind of have to live by example too. Yeah. At the end of the day, so so if you if you're a doctor that's working on those issues uh, at the same time that you're treating a client a patient, that's admirable because then the patient can watch your growth. Yeah. That is powerful uh, because then the doctor becomes human. But um, if you if you really and I have a big thing about diet diet drinks, you know, I, I, they, they, you know, I, I have a big issue with them. Not a topic. But um, if you if you don't set the right example, yeah. it's kind of tough to um, to to try and convince people that they should make changes. So mm-hmm. I think it starts with us. Mm-hmm. I think if we show that what we're doing is working for yeah. us then it's a lot easier to, to motivate someone uh, who wants to make a change. I think that's yep. one thing. The other thing I, 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 I think we need to do is make it more easy for people to understand. Mm-hmm. Many doctors and attorneys talk in medicalese or legalese, yep. and um, we need to break the information down in such a way that it makes sense on a basic level mm-hmm. and that the patients can really understand what you're saying just telling them not you know you need to have a healthy lifestyle you need to um you need to eat better and this is what you need to eat like these are the foods you need to eat i think you need to go a step further and say you know it's the stuff in the food that that keeps us healthy so the the foods have you know these things that we that things called nutrients and these are the nutrients that we need to, 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 to utilize, that our bodies need to utilize in order to, and this, these are some examples of nutrients that are in these foods. Mm-hmm. And this is why the nutrient works. And I, I think you need to make it really simple and at a granular level so that the clients can, or the patients can understand why they need to, why they need to do what you're asking them to do. Yeah. So, so I think we can do more perhaps mm-hmm. um, from the professional front. And, and, but we too need to be aware. And if we're not aware, then we can't help our patient. I love that. I love that. And, you know, for the listener out there, maybe it's just, you know, I don't necessarily think everyone putting out health information online is putting out the correct information. Um, based, there's a lot of biases out there, but if there's someone out there that you 
are motivated or inspired by, maybe use that not, and again, it's, it can be totally double-edged sword. Like you might beat yourself up if you're not getting to that level, but maybe just, um, you know, follow along and watch them and let them serve as some inspiration or find a professional like yourself <laughs> who's uh, walking the walk and talking the talk. And before uh, I conclude with a couple of personal questions, I did want to, um, I'm going to put this in the show notes as well, but your book's called Minerals, The Forgotten Nutrient, Your Secret Weapon for Getting Healthy and Staying Healthy. Is that correct? Yes. yes and yes. and again, if, if somebody wants a resource aside from your amazing website, um, where can they get that? Can you get that on Amazon? You can get that on Amazon or you can get that from our website or you can get Perfect. it from Google or yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now a couple of personal questions and then uh, we're going to wrap up. Do you have a morning routine? I don't. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and, and this is what I do. Well, if you can call it a routine. Um, I When I wake up, I I want to wake up peacefully. I don't mm-hmm. like chaos. Mm-hmm. So I, I have, when, I, when I'm awake, I take a couple minutes just to calm myself before I start my day, as opposed to just jumping out of bed and starting mm-hmm. to take a shower or go work, work out right away. Um, but beyond that, I don't have a routine. And part of that has to do with my lifestyle because mm-hmm. I don't control my schedule hundred percent beyond the fact, <laughs> you know, so that's why I wake up earlier than most people, because normally people won't call me like at five o'clock in the morning or oh. just start my day. So, um, but I do have a daily during the day, each day I need to have done some kind of activity okay. and, and depending on the exertion level of the activity, I will make sure I recover appropriately. Okay. And um, I, in terms of diet, I do not have a particular diet. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I try to do is to cut out too much sugar. Mm-hmm. I, I try to cut out the car, you know, the bad carbs, like the white breads and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And and eat those maybe in isolated instances. Yep. I, I don't believe in, unless there's a medical reason for it, I don't believe in cutting out foods. I don't like the word diet mm-hmm. uh, because it, 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 um, it just, it, it, I think it defeats the purpose of living. <laughs> I agree. So, so I just think awareness perhaps and education are, are probably my routine, if you can call it that, because by being aware, I can do the things that I need to do to stay healthy and not just rely on a tip, you know, to, to make sure that I'm healthy. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. And we're on, I mean, there's so many nuance, like I resonate with a lot of what you said in this entire interview. We're definitely on the same page when it comes to a lot of things, including nutrition uh, and diets. And, you know, I gave up the dieting world a few years back because I found it was, you know, I can't, I mean, I have a lot of women that want to lose weight, but they can't even stick to eating real food, let alone sticking to a diet and then cutting out food. So I'm like, okay, let's start with the basics and just start real food. Right. Right, Enjoy all of it and and not cut it out unless, you know, and again, I think it's, it's, it's all, um, a stepwise, but we got to meet a lot of people where they're at and in the society in general, I don't think a lot of people can come in and just go right on a keto diet and eliminate carbon. I no, that's no. not even realistic. Like if oh. we're trying to talk about true health, we got to meet them where they're at. And maybe it's just introducing like one real food meal a week, yes. you know, and then yes. going up from there because with a state of, you know, stress in our world, um, in overwhelm, I think, you know, mm just adding on a diet or cutting out food groups or saying you have to eat completely clean 24 seven is just, just exactly, exactly unreasonable. So exactly, exactly. Um, and last question, what is one thing that you know now that you wish you knew five or 10 or even 20 years ago? Oh my gosh. And, and I, that, that's such a good question because I blame myself every time about my mom, because mm. I, 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 um, if I knew if I had taken this, time to learn my mom died when I was 32 and if I take the time to learn about how to stay healthy before I was in my 30s I probably would have had her around to meet my child so so and and actually she passed the same the same night I gave birth she passed you know she passed you know so so that's something that's always at the back of my brain is if I had educated myself the same way I educated myself in school about law. <laughs> mm-hmm. If I had educated myself before and had not enabled her by giving her just all those meds, 
and, and, you, and, and in retrospect, I, the side effects of those medications were what got her into the hospital so many times, the fainting spells, the, you know, all those issues. I, I, so I think education is, so, and it's, it form, it's when, when people hear about education, they think it's formal education in the area that you were trained to in. And it's more than that. Education should be viewed as the, you know, achieving the ability to learn, not just about law or, or medical issues, mm -hmm. but, but uh, learn about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, learn how you can be a better person mm -hmm. and how you can improve your, your habits and your lifestyles, et cetera. So I wish I were more educated um, at that time. And, um, and that's why education is such a big issue with me, mm -hmm. because it's so important to have the ability to independently verify information that you get mm -hmm. to, to, and, and then apply that information to your life and other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I wish I knew before I knew it, mm -hmm. because um, it has it has a personal effect on my loved ones. Mm -hmm. And just know, mom would be very happy to see what you're doing today. I mean, she's <laughs> looking down at you and saying, wow, you've really made a difference in this world and you should oh, be thanks. very happy about that. So mom would be proud. Thanks, 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 thanks. So where can the audience find you? Where do you like to hang out? Are you on social media or is it just mainly just go to your website because it looks like you have we're a not, lot of resources there. Yeah, yeah, we're not as consistent on social media. We, we're on Facebook, we're on, we, but, we, but we're on, um, on Instagram a bit. Um, but the website is where you'll get a wealth of information at phlabs.org or phlabs.com. So um, our proactive health labs, uh, in, on, and it, that's online. And we have a wealth of information there mm -hmm. that people can utilize and, and just kind of double check themselves to make sure that, you know, they're doing the right thing. Well, I have to say, looking at your site, one blog post is like worth 10 times the any social media post. So like, you don't need to be on social media, just go to her website and, uh, and binge there because there's just so much content. So, oh, uh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh, taking the time to come on here today. I'm sure it's early. You're in California, right? We are, it's about seven o'clock. Yeah, so speaking of getting up early, you're, you're up early just to do this interview, but thank you because you are, you are changing lives every day, including on this interview. So thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. And with that, I'm out of here. Talk to you again soon.